And what this is, it's biology. Okay, now, for the most part, that means all these wonderful little critters we cannot see. You can take millions of microbes and put them on the sharp point of a pin. So they're very difficult to see, but they all do things. When we have a disease with a plant, when we, we have a disease with an animal, uh, the animal will tell us something's going on, but these is the underlying cause. And what we have is we have good guys and we have bad guys. And it, the reality is, is these guys run the world. We think, yes, please come in. We think we are the bosses. Uh, sorry, got news. We are not the boss. At best, God said, I'm going to create this world. And in the first chapter of Genesis, he says, this is how I did it. For all you guys who aren't paying attention, this is my place. Okay? I put this together, and this is the divine order of creation. And through this whole process, he put in a system that maintains itself. It has longevity. And so how this works is either through good biology or bad biology. So it's extremely critical that we understand what these guys are doing. Because if we go about this the wrong way, we are not immune to the consequences. Okay, we put a pathogen in place, it is going to have some dire consequences. Okay, so just one real quick blurb on pathogens. Okay, Clostridium botulinum. Cute little name, nasty little guy. Okay, we take about a teaspoon of its toxin, botulinum, botulism, that will take out one-fourth of the world's population. Just a teaspoon. So how much of that do you think it takes to kill a chicken or make a cow sick? or kill an infant. Don't need very much. Okay? So we have a world population of about what, 9 billion? Pushing. So you can take out over 2 billion people with a teaspoon of stuff. Some of these microbes are pretty pretty nasty on the bad side. So how does God control the bad guys? with the good guys. That's how his system works. We try to control the bad guys with a synthetic compound. God does not. Okay? He controls them with the beneficial microbes. And here's the problem. When we create a synthetic compound we are creating something that has never been found in nature. Okay, glyphosate doesn't exist in nature. Liberty doesn't exist in nature. Fungicides don't exist in nature in the way that we buy them. So the problem is we're putting out all of these compounds into nature that nature doesn't have a mechanism to deal with. And so oftentimes, they He's don't go talking away. about good guys and bad guys here. We do a lot of things that affect them, but we're not told that it affects them. When we put out a fungicide, a fungicide affects the good biology. It affects the physiology of the plant. So I've got Abe here, and I say, okay, Abe, i got to have you do this whole big job list today. And before you get started, you get no breakfast, and here's a 100-pound pack I want you to wear all day long. Oh, there's another one on your back. There's another one back here. So you get to go work really hard out in the sun all day with no food or water and do this job. Okay? 
That's the equivalent of a fungicide on your plant. It's going to shut things down. Okay? It will kill some of the bad guys, but it's the mechanism in which it kills bad guys also says, here's something else for you guys to deal with. Okay, so everything has a cause and effect. So why it happens, we're gonna go through those things and let's talk about them. So when you have questions, holler at me, okay? Just raise your hand and because you'll be doing someone else a favor who says, you know, I don't know if I should ask that question. For so you livestock and poultry guys, and, and you humans, okay? For, for most of you guys here that are human, honestly, these microbes that we use for the poultry, George, we use for the calves, um, we use for the human food grade for us, it is the most effective, least expensive thing you can do to change your health, period, okay? Now, let's just do a little quick analysis of this because the soil is exactly like the gut whether we're talking an, a chicken, a livestock, or a human. It is all the same. This is the amazing part about how God put things together. Okay? He uses the same physiology in each different area. Okay? And so, let me just take a second and explain this so that you guys... I mean... It isn't, I mean, we'll just talk about a little church here, okay? But this is God's church, okay? And this is on the order of creation, all right? And how God does this is we have hydrogen right here, which is the very first element, okay? It has one proton in the center, and it has one little electron that floats around it, okay? Then the next element over here is called helium. Okay, now this guy has a molecular weight of one. Helium has a molecular weight of four, okay? So what God did is he took one proton, two protons, then he took two neutrons, and then he put out here two electrons. Okay? Because the electrons and the protons always match. Okay, then when he did the next one, what he did is he did three... Uh, he did three protons and he did three neutrons. So this one has a molecular weight of one. This is four. This is six. Then he's got three electrons out there. All God did was take one proton and an electron, and then he just made another element by doubling it. That's all he did, okay? The neutrons are neutral, okay? They weigh just a whisper more than the proton. And the electrons, they're like the feathers on the chicken, not the chicken. They don't weigh anything at all. But how God replicated the entire universe was the very same principle. He took that atom and he built on it. And then he did the second one, and it went from one atom to two atoms to three atoms. How many atoms does calcium have? 20. Has a molecular weight of 40. Okay? Everything is the same atom, just put in a different combination. It's brilliant. All the way up. I just have more atoms, throw in a few neutrons, and I have more electrons. It's the same thing that built everything from one simple thing, one atom, one electron. Everything is on the same principle. The whole world, the whole universe, everything that we know out there, every form of energy is on the same principle. Pretty simple, pretty brilliant, okay? So when we look at this, we look at this order of creation, God does this with everything. So physiology in an animal is really no different than physiology in a human or in the soil because everything on this planet that I've been able to find that's natural or unnatural gets made first of minerals. Okay? 
Can anybody tell me anything on this planet that's not a mineral? I can't. Okay. Now, when it comes to our life and what we do, okay, we have bodies. And if we keep reading in the Bible, it says you're dust and you're going to go back to dust. Okay. So, that's pretty plain. Do you know how much we're worth in dust? Human body? Well, don't want to give you guys a big head. About two bucks. That's our trade-in value when we go back to recycling. Okay? But the cool thing is, while we're alive, we have this biology system that says, how do I sustain or restructure all of these minerals? Okay, so we got Reuben. He says, you know, I got to have fingernails. Got to have toenails. I got to have bones. You know, and, and I've got to have, I'm going to go work really hard, so I need muscles. Okay, so all of these things have to get put together. And what happens is, whether it's a soil microorganism or a gut microorganism, it has to take a resource that's made of minerals and change it into all of these various compounds. So, so George, like you're talking, is, is when we put microbes into the system, if they're good microbes, something beneficial is going to happen. If we put in pathogenic microbes into the system, they're going to produce something that is detrimental. Okay, simple as that. There's two hard fast rules is good microorganisms and bad guys. Okay? These guys produce nutrition. These guys without exception produce toxins. And it is just as black and white as that. Period. There are no exceptions. Okay, so whether we're, we're, as we talk about the soil, how do we get all of these insoluble minerals that God put here into a plant and not waste it? Well, um, Fertilizer companies weren't around when God started all this. There was another system in place. And so what was that system? How did it all work and what, what went on? Well, it was the biology system. And so what type of biology is doing what type of work in our systems? And that's what we're going to talk about. How this stuff works. Because we think we're in charge out there. At best, God gave us a role of stewardship. He created the planet. He put all the laws in place. And if you think about it, when you think about a crop, you don't have to teach a crop what to do. It already came pre-programmed. Marty, do you have to teach your animals what to do? They came pre-programmed. Guess who didn't? You got her, George. We did not come pre-programmed. We get the principle of agency. We get to choose to say, you know what? I want good microbes, or I want some really bad guys. I want to see if I can outwit them. Get the upper hand on them. I want a challenge today. Mike says, you know what? I can do this. Okay, That is going to be a really tough role. So this system, as beautiful as it is, is already in place. If we understand it, we are better as managers. Because last I checked, this place was here before we got here, and I think it's going to be here after we leave. So it really isn't ours, but we get the opportunity to learn. And that's what we take with us, is this understanding of how we steward God's work. Because one day, all of us are going to have a conversation with him. And this will be part of it. Okay? Do we understand 
who he is and what he does. Okay? So, as we get into this, just remember that when we talk about something in the soil, the same thing is going on in the gut. And it doesn't matter whose gut or what gut. It is biology altering minerals. And if they're there, something happens. If they're not there, something doesn't happen. Okay? So, 